A warning, our next story contains details some people may find disturbing. An Australian man has described how he said his goodbyes as best he could to his parents and sister before he left them dead or dying in the crater of Fakari, White Island. Jesse Langford was 19 when Fakari erupted. He says he was hit by a wall of black but somehow made it out of the crater and into the arms of a rescuer despite his extreme pain. Adam Hollingworth reports. Adventure junkie Jesse Langford jumped at the chance to go to Fakari, White Island, while on a cruise with his parents and sister. At no point did I sign a waiver or did my mum. Um, and I really doubt that my father would have either. His dad paid the $1,600 for the whole family to go, but only Jesse returned. Just based off what I read, I thought it was t perfectly safe, and I would have presumed so. In a pre-recorded interview from his Sydney home, he said safety protocols amounted to sticking close to the guides. The main guide, Hayden Inman Marshall, suggested they put on their gas masks if the gases got too overwhelming. I thought it was um, ironic considering he didn't have a mask at all. Langford said it felt uncomfortable and eerie as they approached the lake. We just heard like a loud bang and it looked like a black firework um, with a black tail just shot up into the sky. And then a couple of seconds later there was another one. And everyone just turned around and started taking photos, thinking this was really cool. The bangs increased in intensity, and he described the black cloud as being like the Dementors in the Harry Potter movies. Then Hayden Marshall Inman yelled for everyone to run. The last thing I saw was just the whole lake just lifting up in a massive explosion, and everyone was just running. Jesse's father, Anthony, was struggling to breathe. His mother, Christine, wasn't moving and he couldn't see his 17-year-old sister, Winona. Soon the screams began to dissipate as he contemplated what to do. I was just sitting with my legs out in front of me, um, upright, just looking around, like, in disbelief. And then I made the decision that I couldn't physically help anyone myself, but... I thought that I could help by at least walking out and telling someone that we were still alive. He made the toughest decision of his life. It still bothers me making, making the decision to get up and walk away. It was a very difficult decision to make. So I pretty much just said my goodbyes as best as I could and got up and started walking. It was an agonising journey till he came across a man with a walkie-talkie who sounded like he was about to leave. I yelled at him and I, and I yelled for help um, and he turned, he turned around and his reaction was pretty much just, holy shit. They eventually got on the boat where Jesse took control, telling medics what to give him. I was pretty much just telling him how to do, do his job, really, as being a bit of a smart-ass. I was just in there, I was like, just knock me out, I don't want to be awake anymore. Um, I've already been in too much pain. Jesse Langford woke up in a Sydney ICU eight days later. His father, mother and sister were all dead. Adam Hollingworth, News Hub.